Right, a very good day. By the way, I made this and I'll show you about it. We'll look inside in a minute, it's quite interesting. So this is about balance and chokes, okay? I'm playing with the uh, this book here, but anybody interested in uh, balance, chokes and things will be fine. But this is part of the foundation exam. What the book is telling us is if we've got a dipole with a piece of coax, there is a very high chance that some of our RF can come back down the outside of the coax. Because when we take an exploded view of our coax, right, what we'll find once we transmit our energy comes up this not only the center pin but also the inside of the shield however it's possible to have some energy coming back down the outside of the shield and that's called common mode currents that's all you need to know so how do we stop that well for a start off is there a problem? There is a problem because when that effectively the coax is now becoming part of the transmission antenna line, so it come all the way back to your radio, and it's possible that could be radiating. All right, this is no good for man or beast. The other problem is if you remember back on this video here, we did radiation patterns. So if we have a dipole, all right, so I'll put a coax here, and then we'll stick a dipole on the top. Let's uh, try and get it fairly equal. Dipole on the top. The radiation pattern will be affected by not only what it should be doing, but also the fact that, so that's radiating. I'll move that so you can see it. And this can be radiating as well, which is no good, right? Because it'll skew our pattern. Very appropriate for Yagi's. On a Yagi, if you remember the TV antenna, all right, or some UHF or, or any, any at Yagi, will need some sort of choking device to make sure that the pattern isn't skewed out of place. So we've got skewing of the pattern, and then we've got interference back coming down the line into your house, causing your burger alarm to go off and all sorts of things. So how do we stop it? Well, we put a ballon, right, at this point here, and I like to call it a choke. The book calls it a ballon. So there's three ways we can put a choke here. We can go for a ferrite, like a little snap-on bead. There's one here from, um, it's literally ferrite. Um, it's a huge thing. I, I really like these. They're blooming expensive, though. And it's the ferrite core 444-177081. And I don't know how much they are. One is 20, crikey, it's about $15. I've got a few of these, actually. I must have got them at a good price years ago. So very expensive and you can clip them, but make sure they're the right size for the coax. If you do that, Jim W6LG recently did a video where after seven of these little clip ons, he wasn't seeing any effect at all. So you could put on 25. Wouldn't really matter. He's got he's got his choking after after uh, after I think it was seven. So there is another method of doing this on the cheap, which is what they call an ugly ballon. And ugly stands for the universal, <laughs> it does, I just made that bit up. Uh, I don't know why it's ugly, because in fact, this guy here has made one and it's not very ugly at all. I think that's quite attractive. Um, he's just gone round and round and round on a big pipe and the wigglies interfere with each other, cancel each other out. So by the time he puts that there, you know, this base here, very close to the feed point, and then it doesn't skew the pattern. However, there was a guy called Steve, G3TXQ, and he, he's silent key, unfortunately passed away. Um, uh, he did this, uh, every one of these lines is an experiment, by the way. It's a fantastic piece of work. It's one of the legendary pieces of work that people refer to when they look at choking impedances. There's a little, there's at the bottom here, uh, there's a little graph. So dark green is very good. Red, not so good. And in some cases, like 10 turns of RG58 on a two inch air cooled cooler, a bit like this guy did here. But with 10 turns, there is below 15 megahertz. There's basically, might as well not bother having one. So anyway, what does he mean about a ferrite cord common mode choke? Well, 
I have one here. We're going to undo it and let you see because I made his highest performing choke for top band 80, 40, 60. That low band. In fact, I made a higher one as well. I have made, I haven't got it here, this one, this line here, 11 turns on a pair of FT24052s. So here's mine. This is called SL5, I think. It's like a high performance RG58. It's got a solid core braided outside. Very good um, coax for its size. And I got, I got one extra. I've put 18 turns on an FT24043. And sure enough, um, I've never, <laughs> I've never, I've screwed it in once. I think I can detect my Vaseline on the SO239. And it's delivering me a very, very high impedance choke on the low bands. All right. Now, sometimes no RF flows back on the outside of the coax because you've got almost a perfect match to 50 ohms. And if you've got a perfect match to 50 ohms, you don't get many of the wigglies coming back down the outside however it's still good practice okay because i'm lazy i don't do this <laughs> but the book tells me to do but i don't have any rf in my audio chain i'm not getting things interfered with if somebody ever says i can hardly hear you sound a bit weird chances are you've got some what they call rf on your audio chain that's what they say it sounds a bit dalecky all right and if you hit the monitor button, plug it into your, your headphones, sometimes you can hear it. All right? I've had it before. It just You just need good chokes to get rid of it. So hopefully that's explained it. Now there is... I'm going to sneeze. Now there's other types of balance. So Mike, M0 MSN, he came up to the factory a couple of years ago now. <laughs> we had a bit of a laugh day where we made from scratch something called a four to one balance. All right. That video is here. A four to one balance, basically, and I've mentioned it before when we did antennas, takes a 200 ohm impedance antenna down to 50 ohms. Okay, it's it, that's a balance, all right? It's, it's a transformer. Okay, that's a four to one. You can get a 49 to one, you can get a 64 to one, and it says it here. There are others, four to one, nine to ones. These are covered in the intermediate and full license courses. So we're not covering them today because it'd just be wasting camera time and I've probably bored you enough with it. Coming up next, actually, in this series of the foundation is we're going to do propagation, which is great fun. Where does that signal actually go and how do we get it there? And then license conditions, which are basically, I will turn into a fun set of rules for you. Okay, beyond that, uh, we've got some really interesting electromagnetic compatibility in the EMF calculations and there'll be a little download for you and you'll be able to have a play with an excel uh, spreadsheet and then we're nearly at the end and there's a few more pages left but what is it all oh it's all health and safety and burns and falling off uh, ladders and things like that and people do fall off ladders in this industry or hobby therefore i thoroughly recommend you look after yourself and you don't overstretch yourself. All right, so my name's Callum. I was about to point to my logo here, but I don't have my branded shirt on. Uh, <laughs> May the force be with you. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.